in the late 1970s, I went down to Socorro, New Mexico, to a doctor friend of mine who uh, was going to help me with my back. And he says, you know, I can't find anything wrong with your back, so I'm going to hypnotize you. And let's see if we can find out what's going on here. So I figured I was a pretty good uh, candidate for it, so he did. And then this whole strange thing happened, you know, all of a sudden this voice says, this really very kind voice says, uh, would you like to know different things? Would you like to know about the nature of reality? Would you like to know about God? And so on. And Dr. Aiken, who was the doctor, said, absolutely, just a moment. And so he went and got his tape recorder and then we just started. And then he would ask questions, and then they got answered. And all of a sudden, everybody was talking about this thing called channeling, which I knew nothing about because it does not feel like channeling. It feels just like a wonderful natural state of expansion, just so broad and so vast and so still yet alive. It's unexplainable. But anyway, out of that silent space came these words, and they were answers to some really uh, profound questions. And then people would say, oh, well, it's really you, Mary Margaret. And I would say, wait a minute, do you really think that I know about the nature of God and about the destiny of, of life and of the world and what's the purpose? These were way beyond any of my expectations of knowledge. And so as the years went on, more and more and more people got interested and so then um, there it was and the simplicity of it was that I don't know what it was. The only reason that I kept on going and remember it, when you I was a student of Zen at the time and Zen looks down upon this kind of action and so you know it's makyo, it's illum, it's made up stuff you know don't pay attention. And so I was tempted to drop it, but Dr. Aiken wouldn't allow that. He was actually excited about the whole thing. So it was his motion, his excitement that moved me forward to, to do this. And then the other thing, I think more than anything that I noticed was that people who followed the simple feeling, the simple feeling of the words, not even necessarily the instruction of the words, the feeling of the words. What was happening was that they were calming down, they were loving the moment of who they were more, they had more courage, they had a sense that there was something endlessly resourceful in them that they could tap on their own. All I knew is that it was harmless, it was absolutely filled with compassion, and it seemed to know. There was a knowing there that I would now call something like divine intelligence, you know, call it whatever you want. But there is something in us that knows. And it just came forward. And what was really clear, and this really, I think, needs to be understood, it was nothing special. This is the thing I would ask any of us to those of us who might emulate certain teachers and so forth, I mean, there's nothing wrong with loving someone. But please know that if the teaching doesn't point back to you, that you are the way to the truth of your own light, if it doesn't hold that, then I would really ask you to question it. Because in the end, you've only got you. You know, in the dark of the night, you know, the hour of the wolf, you know, four o'clock in the morning, you wake up and, and you're afraid and you've only got you. And words, other people's words don't do it. It has to be a resonance that comes from you. And that was what Bartholomew taught, whatever that was, that was ever and only the teaching.